Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives or become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. A reminder that uh, we are holding a book live party. For my wife's new business, selling hair accessories, and you can attend on June the 11th, either going to ashira.greatdetectives.net or following the link that'll be over at our Facebook page on facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do also want to encourage you to check out our other podcast, and today my focus is on the amazing world of radio at amazing.greatdetectives.net. Tomorrow, we're kicking off our summer series, as chosen by our Patreon supporters, The Summer of Angela Lansbury. We have several weeks of great entertainment ahead, featuring one of the entertainment world's living legends, Angela Lansbury. We'll be featuring episodes of uh, Suspense, the NBC University Theater, so proudly we hail, and more Uh, Check it out at amazing.greatdetectives.net starting this Wednesday. And our other podcasts include The War, the war war.greatdetectives.net, the video version of this podcast at videotheater.greatdetectives.net, and also go ahead and check out the Classy Comics uh, podcast, uh, looking for great comics, both uh, classic and modern, at classycomicsguy.com. Now it's time for today's previously uncirculated episode of Let George Do It. The original air date on this one is October the 4th of 1946. This was the third episode, and the title is The Kleptomaniac. <laughs> Your neighborhood Chevron gas station invites you to Let George Do It. Brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Motor Oil. George Valentine. Yes, George Valentine, fresh out of uniform and eager to put his many talents to work, as well as to earn a living, ran an ad in the local paper. Do you have a crime that needs solving? Do you uh, have a dog that needs walking? Have you a wife that needs spanking? Let George do it. His ad attracted several clients, some who paid him a fee and some who paid him nothing. His secretary, Claire Brooks, worries about the mounting pile of bills. But George, as he sits in his office with his feet on his desk, is occupied with more important matters. Claire, I wonder, do you think I could find any sardines? Oh, I'll send Sonny out. Sardine on rye? Oh, no, no, not a sandwich. Bait. Bait? What do you want to catch? A fish. Mr. Valentine, you can't afford a fishing trip. Yeah, but if I get a client before Friday, a nice, simple case, you know, somebody wants me to find their uncle or lose their mother-in-law, just a few quick bucks and I'm on my way. You can't afford a fishing trip. <sighs> I'm sitting back in the rowboat. I haven't a care in the world. Just soaking up the sun. All of a sudden, wham! Then another wham. Mr. Valentine. I got a bite. What is it, Sonny? Yes, Sonny, what is it? Halibut, swordfish, yellowtail? Mrs. Harrington. Isabel Harrington. James Harrington's wife. There, you see, I did catch my fish. I told you, sardine's the best bait in the world. Hey, sis, is he feeling all right? It's normal for him. Send her in, Sonny. Okay. Now, remember, Mr. Valentine, she's the Mrs. Harrington. Yeah, I got you. Oh, Mr. Valentine? Oh, come in, Mrs. Harrington. <laughs> come right on oh, in. Oh, oh uh, sit here. You'll be more comfortable. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh-huh. This is my secretary, Claire Brooks. But don't let her upset you. She oh. knows all the skeletons intimately. Oh, how charming. Uh, Mr. Valentine, I, I've been trying to get up enough nerve to come here. Well, you just go right ahead and open up and talk. Nothing goes out of this office. And nothing comes in. Oh, uh, I, I, I'm afraid it's someone, someone close to me. They get into trouble. Oh, Mr. Valentine, I want you to watch that person every minute of the day. Do you understand? Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, What kind of trouble? Well, you see... Oh, it's so humiliating. This person uh, picks up things. Picks up? Mm -hmm. Oh, a kleptomaniac. Oh, Mr. Valentine, I can't go on. Oh, now, Mrs. Harrington... Oh, no, 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 please. Stay here. Uh, Have lunch with me. Do a plot with the boy. Oh, but Mrs. Harrington... Please, be there. 
<laughs> a kleptomaniac, eh? Must be her husband. Her husband? Mr. Valentine? Yes? Don't look now, but your fountain pen is missing. Well, look, Mrs. Harrington, the food is fine and the company excellent, uh-huh. but... Uh, <laughs> what do you say we get down to cases? Uh-huh. Give me back my fountain pen. Your, your fountain pen? Look in your purse, Mrs. Harrington. Oh. oh, then you know everything. Well, I'll be quite frank... I'm under a doctor's care. He expects to cure me in a month or two, but meanwhile, my husband is running for alderman. Oh, I see. Uh, does your husband know that you uh, pick up things? Oh, no. Oh, no. And you must never find out. Oh, please, please promise oh, me. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Tarrington. You see, Melvin Gordon is running against my husband. You know Mr. Gordon. Gordon's department store, Mr. Valentine. Oh, yes, yes. Well, just forget about it, Mrs. Harrington. The election is tomorrow... And I'll stay with you until your husband's elected alderman. Oh, Mr. Valentine, if you'll protect me for myself, I'll pay you well. I promise. Oh, well, we'll discuss that later. Now, suppose you run along home, and I'll be there this afternoon. Oh, that's wonderful. I have a little shopping to attend to, and then I'll go straight home. Oh, good. That's fine. See you later. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Well, how about that, Claire? I'm going home and pack my rod and reel. Mr. Valentine. Oh, I can just taste those fish. Mr. Valentine, <laughs> she went shopping. Yeah, I know she did. She Shopping? Claire, let's get out of here. Why come here? What makes you think she shops in Gordon's department store? Because she'd be in most danger here. You heard her. Gordon is running against her husband for alderman. Still, I... Mr. Valentine. Where? There. Hmm? Compact. Compact? Straight ahead. Oh... What's she got in her hand? Gold compact. Uh Uh-huh. With stone. How much? About $50. Oh. Oh. Did you see that? In her pocket. Come on. What are you going to do? Well, you you look at compacts and stay close to me. You got it? But, Mr. Valentine... Do as I say. Oh, all right. Well, hello there, Mrs. Harrington. Oh, Mr. Valentine. (laughs) Yes, a lovely store, isn't it? Oh. Yes, I've often told Mr. Gordon that he can be proud of me. I uh, beg your pardon, madam, but may I have that compact? A compact? What compact? The one you were looking at, madam. Oh, oh well, uh, I decided against it, miss. Oh, that's quite all right, madam. But where is it? Why, I put it back on the counter, of course. It isn't on the counter. Oh, well, uh, now, young lady, I, I distinctly saw Mrs. Harrington put it back on the counter. Yes. Yes. I said hello to her. She put the compact down. And All then... I know is it isn't here. I think I ought to call the store detective. Oh, oh no, no, don't do that. He'll take you upstairs to have a little talk with Mr. Gordon. Mr. Gordon? No, no, wait a minute. The I... compact isn't here, mister. Oh, well, uh, well, why not search that young lady there? What? Who, me? Yeah, look in her pocket. Why, you... Did you... Oh, it is in my pocket. Well, come on, miss. Mr. Gordon will want to talk to you. Mrs. Harrington, go home. Beat it. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Well, come on, miss, this way. And don't make any trouble. No, no, miss, don't make any trouble. Why, you, you... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> No, no, no. You're wasting your time, young man. But, Mr. There Gordon... There are too many things disappearing from my store. I'm going to make an example of this young woman, and I can't be talked out of it. Now, you get that? Uh, uh, Mr. Gordon, are you married? Uh, I certainly am. Then you have a wife? I certainly do. Mr. Gordon, do you love your wife? Is the door closed? Yes. I love my wife. <laughs> then... Then you must know how I feel. Oh, that this uh, girl is your wife? Mr. Gordon, don't listen it's, to him. It's all right, Claire. In spite of everything you've done... I'm not ashamed. Oh! Look, Mr. Gordon, here's $50 for the compact. Does that cover it? No, 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 I guess so. Oh, I I promise you, it'll never happen again. No, all right, take her home. Oh, thanks, Mr. Gordon. Darling, thank him. Let me out of here. Yes, darling, of course. Goodbye, Mr. Gordon. Uh, Good luck, young man. Oh, Clara, listen. I hate you. It was the dirtiest trick you've ever played on me, and I hate you. You'll never get a chance to play another trick because I quit, understand? Oh, well, I definitely quit, but I definitely hate you. Oh, Claire, honey. <laughs> now, look, you like your job. I know you do. Now, forget it, darling. It's just part of the game. <laughs> now, come on. Wipe your eyes and powder your nose. Here, use the compact. 
And just to show you the kind of a man I am, you can keep it. Now what? Now we go back to the office, and then I'll go to the Harrington. Don't think I'm going to forget this in a hurry, Mr. Valentine. I'll be a good girl, and I'll bring you back a halibut. Someone's trying to attract your attention in that car. Mr. Valentine! Hmm? Oh, it's Mrs. Harrington. Mrs. Harrington, I told you to go home. Well, I'm going now, Mr. Valentine. I was worried about Miss Brooks. Oh, well, everything's fine. Oh, you were superb, Mr. Valentine. And whatever my bill will be, I want you to double it. Well, oh. thanks a lot. Now go on home. I'll be expecting you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Don't laugh, Mr. Valentine. Maybe you don't believe in a woman's instinct. But I wish you'd drop this case. I have a feeling that... Mr. Valentine, what are you doing with that fur scarf? She did it again. A silver fox. Claire, think. Was she wearing a silver fox when we had lunch with her or while she was shopping? Oh, no, I couldn't have missed it. I noticed it in the car just now while we were talking to her. She must have picked it up when we were with Gordon. A silver fox. Oh, call her back, Mr. Valentine. Make her take care of it. Well, now, don't get excited. Why should I worry a good client? But, Mr. Valentine, I have a feeling... Will you forget that you're a woman and that you've got an instinct? Come on, we'll go back to the office. With the silver fox? With the silver fox. Come on. Oh, all right, but I've got a feeling. Oh, my feet are killing me. The least you could have done was to hail a cab. I just put out 50 bucks for that compact. Only one more block. Mr. Valentine? It's Sonny. Well, why did you leave the office? I've been looking all over for you, What's two. up? Mrs. Harrington phoned. Yeah? She says when you go out to her house this evening, don't worry if you bump into a cop. A cop? It seems that last year on her birthday, her husband gave her an animal to drape around her neck, and somebody stole it this afternoon out of her car. Say that again, Sonny, and slowly. Somebody stole her first scarf. It was a silver fox, black, with... Hey! Hey, like that! You've got it. Yep, I've got it. Mr. Valentine, what are you going to do with it? Take it to Mrs. Harrington. Oh, but there might be a cop around her house. Well, I'll, I'll sneak by him. I'll find a cab and we'll go right out there. Here, Claire. What? Meanwhile, wear it around your neck. No, thank you. I'm not wearing any hot fox. It's not fashionable this season. Then here, Sonny, wind it around your head. Huh? You know, like Daniel Boone. I don't want to be Daniel Boone. Then be Buffalo Bill. I don't want to be Buffalo Bill. Sonny! I want to be Van Johnson. Never mind, I'll stuff it inside my shirt Mr. Valentine, I've got a feeling Sweetheart, shut up, will you? Here comes a cab Hey, taxi, Mr. taxi Mr. Valentine, wait Taxi, come on It's a police car it... Uh-oh Jeepers Can I do something for you, sir? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I beg your pardon, officer I, I thought I was hailing a taxi Oh, that's quite all right, sir Very understandable Can I give you a lift? Oh, no, no, no. I, I wouldn't think of troubling you. No trouble, no trouble at all. Step right in, sir. Oh, no, officer. I, I, I just can't let you do it, but thanks anyway. Goodbye. Uh, would you mind telling me your name? My name? Or uh, Valentine. George Valentine. Uh, Mr. Valentine, pardon me for mentioning it, but uh, what is that sticking out of your shirt? My shirt? Oh, uh, you, you mean my, my, my pet? Yeah, my pet. I always carry him close to me. Pet? Pet what? Well, it's a, a, a gopher. That's it. My pet gopher. <laughs> Strange. First time I ever saw a gopher is polyphemous with a bushy tail. Gopher is polyphemous? Gopher? Oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> it's a gopher. <laughs> with a bushy tail? Oh, uh, well, uh, you see, this is a funny sort of gopher. It, it, it's got a little squirrel in it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to contradict you, sir. Not squirrel. Vulpus fulvus. Vulpus fulvus? <laughs> fox. Silver fox. Hop in, Mr. Valentine. But officer... And there's plenty of room, so bring your friends with you. How will George talk himself out of this predicament? And while George is pondering his problem, I'll take just a moment to tell you what occurred to me as I was driving to the studio this afternoon... I was thinking that every Chevron gas station should wear a sign reading, Local Boy Makes Good. For these cream green and burgundy Chevron stations, you know, are home-owned. 
Generally, the Chevron dealer is a fellow who worked hard and in many cases learned the business from the ground up before he branched out for himself. Now he runs his own Chevron gas station, and you can bet your bottom dollar he's going to hustle to make it tick. That, of course, explains why the service is cheerful and willing and competent at Chevron gas stations. I'd like to see you get acquainted with the Chevron dealer in your neighborhood. You'll find that he's a nice fellow and mighty glad to help you out any time. He gives your car the best, too, climate-tailored Chevron Supreme gasoline and RPM compounded motor oil. Drop in at a Chevron gas station this weekend and see. Remember, your Chevron credit card is good as gold with any Chevron dealer. It looks as if George is really in a jam this time, and with the law, too. Right now, George, Claire, and Sonny are cruising along in a squad car. The officer is their chauffeur. I tell you, you're making a big mistake, officer. Maybe so, sir, but they told me at the station to be on the lookout for a vulpus fulvus. Hmm. Silver fox. May I congratulate you on your vocabulary, officer? (laughs) Thank you very much. And may I congratulate you... On your punctitude. What'd you say she was? Cute. Oh, oh. Now, uh, take the glove compartment in my car. Now, most people would keep cigarettes in there. What would you keep in it? Map. Lipstick. Bicarbonate of soda. Well, I got it filled with books. You know, books. Pocket edition. Oh, look, officer, if you'll just take us to Mrs. Harrington. She's very absent-minded. She forgot that she asked me to take care of her silver fox. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm taking you to the station. Cheapers, officer, give us a break. I'm sorry, son. I'm taking you to the station. Officer. Hmm? Now, officer. Okay, I'll take you to the Hamptons. <laughs> There doesn't seem to be anyone at home. I know Mrs. Harrington is home. I told her to stay home. Wait a minute. There's someone coming. Now, uh, if you don't mind, I'll handle this in my own way. Yes? Oh! Oh, what's wrong? Mrs. Harrington. I said I'd handle it. Mrs. Harrington, may we please come in? Uh, Yes. Yes, of course. uh... Yes, thank you. Mrs. Harrington, it's about your vulpus vulpus. Oh, there, there must be some mistake, officer. There's no one here by that name. He means your silver fox. Oh, oh. Oh, uh, the, the servants are out. Uh, I'll have to answer the phone. Uh, go right ahead, Mrs. Arrington. And maybe I shouldn't mention this, but she doesn't appear to be a close friend of yours, Mr. Valentine. Hello? Well, you didn't give her a chance to say anything. Well, uh, oh, there's a policeman in my house now, Captain well, you see, uh, oh, uh, Captain Wo- uh, uh, let me talk to him, Mrs. Harrington. Uh, hello? Uh, this is Flint speaking. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Flint. Mr. Valentine, what's wrong? Get this, Mrs. Harrington. Yes, I have your scarf. I took it out of your car. Why? Well, I, I thought it was something you'd picked up. Oh, good heavens. Well, I captured somebody already, Captain. Now, it'll be all right. Just tell yes. the officer that I'm a good friend of yours. Yeah, he has it on him. Oh, if only my husband stays yes, upstairs. What's he got to do with it? Well, I, I forgot to tell you. You see, my husband is very jealous. Oh, great. Uh, thank you, Captain. Au revoir! <laughs> now then, uh, Mrs. Harrington. Is this man a dear friend of yours? Well, you see, I... Yeah, uh, please, Mrs. Harrington, just answer the question. Oh. Is this man a dear friend of yours? Is who a Uh, dear friend of hers? Oh, oh, James. Uh, uh, Officer, uh, this is my husband, Mr. Harrington. Isabel, the officer asked you a question. I caught him with the silver fox, Mr. Harrington. Here it is. Just a moment, officer. Isabel, is this man a dear friend of yours? Why? Yes? Why? Yes? Uh, Why, I never saw him before in my life. Oh, gee, is it... Take them away, officer. We'll be down later to prefer charges. Thank you, sir. Sorry to have bothered you, Mrs. Harrington. But, officer... Sonny, be quiet. Come on. Let's go. Officer, will you please listen to me? Once and for all, Mr. Valentine, I'm taking you to the station. But if you just give me... Now, don't try to talk your way out of it, Mr. Valentine. He's got you with the goods. Where? A compact or a fur scarf, what's the difference? After all, we've got to protect our client, haven't we? So forget it, darling. It's just part of the game. Claire. When do they allow visitors, officer? Usually Mondays. Then I'll see you Monday, Mr. Valentine. Oh, and I'll bring you a halibut. Go ahead. Rub it in. Goodbye, Mr. Valentine. Take care of him, officer. Sonny, say goodbye to him. Uh, Just a minute, uh, miss. (laughs) 
I'm sorry to be disagreeable, but I found all three of you together. Therefore, I'm turning all three of you in together. <laughs> now, come along, if you please. <laughs> Jailbirds. Cut it out, will you, Sonny? Jailbirds behind bars. Well, we're just being detained until Mr. and Mrs. Harrington get here. Yeah, then they'll put us away for good. What do you suppose they did to my sister? Poor Claire, she... Poor Claire, my eye. She was glad it happened. Well, if she saw me now, she'd probably laugh out loud. <laughs> Claire! Claire, where are you? I'm your next-door neighbor. Could I borrow a cup of sugar? Well, why didn't you tell us you were there? I wanted to listen to you, Mr. Valentine. Call me George. This is no time to be formal. I thought maybe I'd hear you say you were sorry. It shows what a little fool I am. Oh, well, Claire, listen. I'd give my right arm to have avoided this. I don't want your right arm. Just once I'd like to hear you say it. I'm sorry. Well, Claire, I... I... Take your time. You've probably got five years. Well, look... I'll tell him you two had nothing to do with this. And when you're out of here, if you're smart, you'll never see me again. You'll, you'll have nothing more to do with me. Will you promise? No. Claire. I'd miss you. Oh, hey. You do like me, don't you? Oh, I guess I do. Then why didn't you smile at that copy to let us go? Oh, now it's my fault. Everybody all right? Everybody healthy and happy? Oh, sure. Just one big happy family. <laughs> hey! He's unlocking our cell. Uh, just a minute, miss. I'll have you out, too. Where are you going to take us, officer? Just follow me, if you please. Mr. Valentine, maybe it's an electric chair. Now, take it easy, sir. <laughs> and Mrs. Harrington is here. With Mr. Harrington? No, no, she's alone. A uh, most intelligent woman, Mrs. Harrington. She's looking at my books. She's very interested in them. Then you better lock them up. What? Just a joke. Oh, Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> here they are, Mrs. Harrington. Oh, Mr. Valentine, will you ever be able to forgive me? That depends. I was just telling Officer Flynn how absent-minded I am. I remember it all now. I was standing on the street yeah, and... Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have to explain, Mrs. Harrington. You're not going to prefer charges against these people, are you? Oh, no. No, <laughs> no of course not. No. <laughs> Preposterous. Uh, then they're discharged. We're free? Uh, very sorry to have bothered you, miss. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye, officer. Uh, goodbye, sir. See you again sometime. I hope not. <laughs> goodbye, officer. Uh, goodbye, miss. You will always remember a glistening pearl in my treasure box of memory. <sighs> Fresh air. Uh, Mr. Valentine, whatever my bill will be, I, I want you to double it. What did you tell your husband? Well, just what I told the officer. Okay, now you're going home. And I'll stay there until the election is over tomorrow. I know, we'll see to that. We're going with you. Oh. What? All of us? Yep, all of us. That's the only way we can keep her out of trouble. Come on, Mrs. Harrington, let's go home. George. I thought I told you to stay with Mrs. Harrington. Sonny's with her, they're having breakfast. George, I'm bored. Oh, now forget it, will you? It'll soon be over. George, I'm bored. Oh, now, come on, Claire. Cheer up. Let's have a big smile. I don't feel like smiling. Well, put some lipstick on. You'll feel better. I guess I could stand a little. All this hang hanging around... Oh. What's the matter? She did it again. My lipstick's gone. Oh, well, never mind. I'll buy you another one. Mr. Valentine... Okay, if I run out and buy a magazine? Sonny, you were left in charge of Mrs. Harrington. Yeah, but Mr. When Valentine... When you're left in charge, you're supposed to stay with her, understand? Yeah, but Mr. Valentine... Wherever she goes, you'll follow her. Yeah, but I can't follow her everywhere. Oh. Well, all right. What time is it? My watch is always fast. Oh, mine keeps perfect time. It's exactly... Hey! Hey! Now what? I know I was wearing my watch. Oh, never mind. I'll buy you another one. Mr. Valentine... Now, take it easy, Mrs. Harrington. What's wrong? I was looking through my closet, and I found this. My silver box. Well, of course. Don't you remember? I have oh, it. I don't mean that one. I mean this one. This one? Oh, don't you understand? There are two silver foxes in my closet. Suffering, Mr. Cat. Valentine. You were right all along. Oh, I must have picked it up. Yeah, well, now, don't go to pieces. We haven't time for hysterics. But that's not all. Mr. Gordon just phoned. He wants to see me immediately. Oh, Mr. Valentine. All right, Mrs. Harrington. Give me that silver fox. I'll handle Gordon.
I knew all along Mrs. Harrington was guilty. After she shot, something always disappeared. Will you please calm down, Mr. Gordon? I brought back the silver fox. You can keep it. Now, be reasonable. Look, when things disappear, you, you charge them to Mrs. Harrington's account, don't you? What's that got to do with Harrington's running against me for alderman? There's still time to get a story in this afternoon's paper. What do you think his chances will be then? It'd be a dirty trick, Mr. Gordon. Uh, look, Valentine, just between us, uh, Harrington's the best man. He should be alderman. But if I'm made alderman, my wife will think I'm wonderful. You'd wreck Mr. Harrington just to make your wife think you're wonderful. You bet I would. Darling. Mildred, sweetheart, come in. Oh, sweetheart, this is Mr. Valentine and my wife, Miss Scott. How do you do? Hello. Well, darling. Well, darling. Is that all you have to say? Hmm? Oh, you look wonderful, sweetheart. I knew it. I'll never forgive you. Mildred, angel. Of course, a great big executive like you, so busy running a store and running for alderman, you haven't time to remember a little thing like a birthday, have you? <laughs> birthday? Oh, Mildred, now, sweetheart, I... Oh, I should have known. Oh, well, uh, pardon me for cutting in, Mrs. Gordon, but I can't keep my mouth shut. I, I know it's supposed to be a surprise, too. A surprise? <laughs> a surprise? He didn't forget your birthday, Mrs. Gordon. He didn't. I didn't? I mean, I didn't. Here you are. I just helped him select it for you. A silver fox. Oh, darling. Oh, I'm going to give you a great big kiss. <laughs> well, I'll run along. That is, uh, unless you have something else to discuss, Mr. Gordon? Uh, oh, no. No, <laughs> not a thing. Good, good. Happy birthday, Mrs. Gordon. I hope you'll enjoy the vulpus fulvus. <laughs> I come back to the office, Mr. Valentine. Well, after hanging around Mrs. Harrington for the last couple of days, I just wanted to be sure the office was still here. Well, we ought to go out and celebrate. After all, Mr. Harrington's an alderman. Okay, Sonny. Run out and buy a bucket of black coffee. And a box of aspirin. Mm, some celebration. Go on, beat it. Okay. Well, I suppose I should congratulate you, Mr. Valentine. Well, she hasn't paid me yet. Hey, Mr. Valentine, Mr. and Mrs. Harrington are here. Oh, no. All right, send them in. Mr. Valentine, you're through with the case, understand? But, Claire, Either suppo- that or you're through with me. You see, Isabel, I told you he'd be here. <laughs> you were right, James. Mr. Valentine, my wife has told me everything. Everything? Oh, everything, yes. I-, I simply had to. I'm glad you did, Mrs. Harrington. We came to thank you for all that you've done for us, Mr. Valentine. And whatever the bill will be, I want you to double it. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Send it to my office. Oh, no need to bother you. Oh, it's no bother. Well, I mean, mailing and all that. If you happen to have your checkbook with you. Mm, checkbook? No hurry, you understand, but uh, if you want to sit right here at my desk... Oh, well, uh... oh, Here you are. Here's a pen. Oh, thanks. Uh, we uh, just came from my doctor. He thinks I'm cured. Really, Mrs. Harry? Oh, yes, my dear. Uh, this last experience, I mean, James' career at stake and all. Oh, it was such a shock... Well, it, it brought me back to Earth again. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Here you are, Mr. Valentine. That's okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Harry. Well, I'm the one who's indebted. You'll come to see me, Miss Brooke? Of course, Mrs. Harrington. And you too, Mr. Valentine. Yep, you bet. Come, Isabel. <laughs> yes, James. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Harrington. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> well, Claire, I'm on my way. I'll pick up a can of sardines and my fishing tackle. See you Monday. How much, Mr. Valentine? One thousand dollars. What? Mm-hmm. One thousand thousand dollars? Oh, I don't believe it. Well, then see for yourself. The check's right there. Where? I don't see it. Well, I distinctly remember. I put it right under that paperweight, you see? No. Well, go ahead and look. It's right under this. It's right. It... Mr. Valentine. Oh, no. She did it again. <laughs> George will be back in a moment. Meanwhile... A friend of mine owns the Chevron gas station down the street, and he was telling me a story the other day. It seems a chap he knew came in when they were putting my friend's name on the canopy of his home-owned station. Looks pretty nice, commented the chap. And it certainly shows folks that you're the boss here. Not on your life, explained my friend. It means that they are the boss here. Well, the motorist didn't get it, so the Chevron dealer went on. The new sign and the cream green and burgundy color scheme, he said, are simply to make it plain that I run my own station. Since I'm in business for myself, how well I get along depends pretty much on how well I treat my customers. And that makes the customers strictly the boss at my Chevron gas station. Well, my friend might have said at all Chevron gas stations. Because the friendliness, the cheerful, expert service you run into at Chevron gas stations is the best way any Chevron dealer has of making his home-owned business useful to you 
and to the community. Well, next week, George Valentine goes on a picnic. But instead of being bothered with the usual things, like ants and rain, he has a new experience. You'll probably hear him saying something like this. Wow, what was that? Who hit me? Somebody threw a shoe at you, Mr. Valentine. It came from that house. Wow, a lady's slipper. Hey, and a note with it. Let me see. It says, I am being held prisoner in this house. Please save me. Hey, it's written in lipstick. Orange lipstick. Must be a blonde. See you later. Chevron Gas Stations all through the West invite you to be with us again next week for another chapter of Let George Do It, brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline. Let George Do It, starring Robert Bailey as George, with Francis Robinson as Claire, and Eddie Firestone Jr. as Sonny, is written by Pauline Hopkins, produced and directed by Owen Vinson. Others in the cast were Sarah Selby as Mrs. Harrington, Stanley Waxman as Mr. Harrington, Joe Gilbert as Mildred, Herbert Butterfield as Mr. Gordon, Ed Max as the officer, and Margaret Brayton as the sales girl. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Dant, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, an interesting uh, situation, and uh, I-, I thought it was not bad. Of course, some of the comedy did depend on. Our heroes having a certain lack of common sense. But you could say that about a lot of comedy, you know, in the golden age and even going, you know, uh, closer to the modern era. But it did have some pretty good moments. Now we turn to listener comments and feedback. And from Facebook, Joe writes, I really, uh, regarding Audition 1, I should say, Joe writes, I really enjoyed this, but it is amazing how much you miss the sound effects and music when they aren't there. I definitely agree, Joe. Uh, It is, you know, one of those things when you get a recording like that, it's like, yeah, we've got a recording of some sort, but the music and sound effects do really tell the story. And I I particularly like the Let George Do It uh, theme. It's you know, really peppy and fun, and I think it particularly works for the series at this point uh, with this fuller uh, arrangement. Uh, Pastor Lisa writes, I love Let George Do It with Bob Bailey. I've heard several episodes on other old-time radio podcasts. was wondering if it would be on the lineup of shows here at The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Thanks, Adam. I'm looking forward to listening to this tonight before going to bed. Thank you for all that you do. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Lisa. I do want to just be clear for everyone, we have done this series before, and in fact, we've done the vast majority of the episodes, and you can go to biglist.greatdetectives.net and uh, listen to uh, all of the Let George episodes that we've done, because we did Let George do it for uh, nearly four seasons, I think. Pretty much as long as we were doing the non-Bob Bailey, uh, yours truly, Johnny Dollar episodes, we were doing Let George Do It. So the 20-odd episodes we're going to bring you over the next, you know, few months are just on top of that. Franzes writes, uh, This is a program which changed almost beyond recognition in its first series. I like the first version, but the second uh, was way better. Uh, I would agree with that, uh, Francis, and it is just interesting to see how this show evolved and to know, uh, even if you listen to that and think this is a bit cheesy and corny, you know that it's going to become 
a lot better when you get into the uh, not the 1948 programs on. Now I have an email from Joel who st states I started listening to a radio series of Inspector McGray, the George Simonson detective. And he gives a link to where it's archived. These are well done in public domain. You may want to consider them. Well, thanks so much for the suggestion, uh, Joel. I went ahead and took a look into this, and uh, there are a couple of things uh, with this. Uh, I do see on the page on archive.org, the uploader designated them as public domain. But that's not actually correct. Uh, the programs in question uh, were uh, broadcast uh, over the uh, BBC, all of them after June of 1957, when uh, broadcasts began to be copyrighted. And that's the case with the vast majority of BBC material. And essentially, as I understand copyright law, under... Uh, Act that was passed in 1996, all uh, foreign works that were under copyright in their home country were brought uh, under U.S. copyright protections. So essentially, uh, any uh, program, uh, program broadcast by the BBC would be under copyright in the United States from 90, for 95 years from when it was first broadcast. And the first episode that they actually listed was broadcast in 1971. So it would be under copyright all the way through 2066 and wouldn't actually be public domain in the United States until 2067. And even then, it still might not work for a podcast purpose depending on the uh, copyright term that remains in the UK, which I believe has a life plus 70 years uh, copyright term for everything. And the BBC is an organization that does enforce its copyrights, which is probably why I won't mess with any uh, British shows after June of 1957, even if I'm continuing to do this sort of thing into my 70s. But thanks for the suggestion, Joel. Back to Facebook now. And Eric writes, So great to hear Richard's whistle again. Uh, maybe my favorite theme music in all old-time radio. And that, of course, is regarding the uh, Charles Johnson matter uh, that uh, previously uncirculated episode we played a few weeks ago. And then uh, Richard writes, uh, recommendation on Facebook, very enjoyable shows, one per day, very good sound quality, go listen. Well, thank you so much, Richard. Well said. And then uh, finally, I have a comment from Twitter. And on Twitter, uh, Will writes, uh, thank you, Mr. Graham, for giving me for taking your efforts for granted because I can't pay for the great detectives. I miss Nightbeat and dig Rocky Fortune and Rocky Jordan. <laughs> You remind me of when radio was king and engaged our imaginations. Well, thank you so much for your comment, Will. And I always appreciate folks who support the show financially and are able to do that. But I understand that that's not going to work for everyone. But I also appreciate and am really blessed by people's kind words and words of encouragement in support of the a program. And there are days when I'll get an email or a comment about how the show is making a difference in people's lives. And that just means so much to me. And even financially, if you're listening to the show every day, uh, that actually uh, would help with uh, advertisers. With most podcast networks, it's going to be based on the uh, number of downloads you get per episode. So I appreciate all our listeners, whether they're able to contribute or not. Uh, thanks so much for the comment, Will. Now that said, I do want to thank our Patreon of the day. Thanks so much to Willard. Willard has been one of our Patreon supporters since March. He's currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Willard. And we will actually be back tomorrow with Rocky Jordan. Next Tuesday, another episode of Let George Do It. 
In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.